And the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Now on that day, Jesus went out of the house and he sat down by the sea. A large crowd gathered around him so that he got in a boat and he sat down and the whole crowd then stood along the shore. And then he spoke at, at length in parables, saying, Now a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and the birds came and they, they ate it up. Now some fell on rocky ground where it had little soil. It sprung up at once because the soil was not neat, deep, but when the sun rose, it was scorched and it withered for lack of roots. Now, some fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and they, they choked it. But some of the seed fell on the rich soil, and it produced fruit a hundred, sixty, thirtyfold. Now, whoever has ears, ought to hear the gospel of the Lord. Yeah. Whoever has ears ought to hear. Did you hear it? Did you hear the words? Uh, what today really is the good word? Eliza Doolittle turns to Eddie Ein or Freddie Einhurst III and she says, words, 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 words. I'm so sick of words. And yet today, today we are called to either hear the word or not hear the word. To act upon the word or completely miss what the word is trying to say to us. Isaiah says it so beautifully and clearly. God's word is coming down just as the rain falls down. And God's word is not going to return useless it, it, until it does its purpose. Just as the rain comes to soften the earth and, and allow the seeds to germinate and grow and produce wonderful fruit, so, so does the word of God, if the word of God can get in. Now, here's the thing. The word of God's going to get in. We don't know when. We, we can't stop the word of God. The kingdom's going to come with us or without us. And the proclamation of the kingdom is final, done deal. We can't stop it, but we certainly can slow it down. We slow it down by not hearing it, by not being able to, to listen to the word as the seed is sown as the seed comes into the ground of our being, and of course the very ground of our being is nothing less than divine, but it can't get in if the word is hard. Today, the gospel is all about hearing the word of God and, and then responding to it, but it cannot bear fruit until it is first received, until it is first heeded. God indeed is the sower, and the seed indeed is the word of God. That isn't said in the beginning of the parable. As a matter of fact, I chose to read the short version of the parable because, well, for a couple of reasons. The first reason is that we know the long version. We've heard it for 40 years or more. But the other reason is it's a parable. And the whole purpose of a parable is to make us stop, think, search, look, get a little off kilter, not having all the answers. Now, Jesus is going to go on to explain the parable to the disciples because they're a bunch of dunderheads. They're not going to get it. And so he's going to say that God is the sower, the seed is the word, and some of it falls on what is rocky ground and what is hard ground and what is uh, weeded ground and what, what, all these kinds of different grounds of grounds and, and, then, and, then, if, and then, good, then good soil and all, all that wonderful, wonderful stuff. But the whole purpose 
you know, the, 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 the distance between two physical objects, the shortest distance, is a straight line. But the shortest distance between a human being and the radical truth of God, which is deep, which is mysterious, which we are never going to able to completely put into words, is parabolic. That's the reason he speaks in, in, in parables. He says today he's going to speak in parables because they're going to, they're going to look but not see. They're going to listen but not hear. That's I, he's quoting Isaiah, but he really wants us to see. He really wants us to hear. He's explaining to the disciples because he wants them to hear. He wants the whole world to hear what he has to say. But, but you ain't going to get it if you don't wrestle with it. So the word, the seed indeed is the word of God. But what kind of a word is it? What does the word, when we talk about the word of God coming into the world, what, what kind of a word is it? You know, most of our words are, are descriptive. Uh, when I describe something, I use words to describe it. God's word is creative. God speaks and the world is is created. Now, if we're going to take that word into ourself, then our speech, too, must have some kind of an effect at some point. If we're going to produce the fruit, huh, then, then the seed has to get in. And by the way, the seed is just a seed until it hits the dirt. The, the, the seed has to get into the dirt. It takes two to tangle, not just the word of God, but it takes that which is the receiver, and that is the earth. And, of course, then the earth, well, the earth then produces the, uh, the, the plant, and the plant then produces the flower, and then the flower produces the fruit. And, of course, the old saying is, may the fruits outdo what the flowers have promised. And if there is anything that is demanded of us, and it is a demand, is that we bear fruit. But we cannot bear that fruit until we are literally capable of taking in the word. And we, we got a real hard time with that. And the reason is we, we don't seem to pay a whole lot of attention. And the word isn't always easy to hear. Sometimes it is, it is absolutely harsh. Sometimes it is utterly confusing. It, it, it moves us off center. It gets us off kilter. We don't really always understand. He speaks in these non sequiturs. They sound like Cohen's. You know, parables are very much like Cohen's. We all know the sound of two hands clapping. What is the sound of one hand clapping? The sower goes out to sow the seed. Next week he's going to talk about the weeds and the wheat. And we're going to scratch our heads because, man, we are really good weed pullers. And he's going to say, don't do that. What in the world are you saying? Hard words. Hard. So, so the first thing he needs to do is get our attention. And, and we need to get our attention so that we can begin to hear some of these hard words. I can remember... Uh, when I was a, a, a young teacher, I was in a group of freshmen, and they were just yuggity, 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 yuggity. I said, gentlemen, it's time to uh, start class, and yuggity, 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 yuggity. I said, gentlemen, please, it's time. I, I need your attention. May I have your undivided attention? Yuggity, yuggity. Finally, I slammed my fist on the desk. I said, I demand pandemonium. <laughs> they all shut up. <laughs> Didn't understand a word I said. Pay attention. Well, Jesus is demanding, well, Jesus is sending some pandemonium, but he's demanding pandemonium as well. Would you pay attention to my words? Would you listen to, now they may be really hard, and you're going to have a hard time with them. We're supposed to struggle with the word of God. It's supposed to make us uncomfortable. It's supposed to get us off kilter. It's supposed to get us out to make us eccentric. And it seems like Jesus was very, very comfortable with the eccentrics, those who are outside the inside circle. Uh, the insiders almost never got it. The outsiders almost always got it, the poor, the forgotten. And, and they were able then to understand the, the, the Cohens, the mysteries. Unless the seed dies, it remains just a seed. Unless you become like a child. Well, what does that mean? If you want to find your life, 
you're going to have to lose your life. Uh, the first shall be last, and the last shall be first. We want to say, give me a break. Speak English, or at least good Hebrew, huh? <laughs> or at least Aramaic, whatever. But make it clear. We can't hear it. And we can't hear it because, well, for a whole bunch of reasons. But one of the reasons is that we don't, well, just like uh, Jack Nicholson said in, 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 in his, his movie when he was the lawyer, he says, you can't handle the truth. We have a hard time handling the hard, raw truth. We can't handle the word of God as it comes to us so very often. Because it's going to call us to action. It's going to call us to die. It's going to call us to grow the plant, to, to make the flower, to bear the fruit. It's going to call for a great deal. So what we do is we, we soften everything. We, we kind of defang the gospel and we defang the word of God. Uh, one of our, our, our modern problems is, is that our language has devolved. It's devolved into what the, the comedian, who was a, a word genius, George Carlin, used to call soft language. Now, the soft language speaks euphemisms. Soft language always speaks in a different way so that, so that it isn't so hard, so that we, we can handle it. And he says, all we're doing these days is we've, we've devolved our language and we are not dealing with reality. We're dealing with very nice, sweet things that are easy for us to, to swallow. And he gives some examples of this. He said, he said you know, in, 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 in old days during the First World War, when a soldier reached his limit and was falling apart and his mind was beginning to crash, because he was around so much war, they had a name for it. They called it shell shock. Two syllables, two simple little syllables. He said, but after the Second World War, they, they made it a little bit less shocking. They called it battle fatigue. He says, we've gone from two syllables now to four. He said, and after the Korean War, he says, we called it operational exhaustion. Now we've gone from four syllables to eight syllables. Now, operational exhaustion sounds like a car that collapses after 100 miles. Huh? And he said, and finally after the Vietnam War, he says, now we call it post-traumatic stress disorder. What the hell is that? What is that? It's a whole bunch of words. He says, he says it's still eight syllables, but now they've added a hyphen. And he said he thinks, and this was a really interesting point, he says he has a hunch that those who came back from Vietnam would have gotten a whole much better treatment had they called it shell shock from the very beginning. And so he says our language is completely devolved. Our, our toilet paper is now bathroom tissue. Our false teeth are dental appliances. A dump is a landfill. Partly cloudy is partly sunny. Constipation is occasional irregularity. <laughs> and you don't get fired anymore, you get downsized. Huh? Israeli, Israeli killers are called commandos. Arab commandos are called terrorists. And nobody dies anymore. They just pass away. Here's the problem, and it really is a problem. The word of God is on a mission. And the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. It is able to cut between the, the, the bone and the marrow, and even more astonishing, to cut between the spirit and the soul. And of course, most of us actually, when we were growing up, at least thought that there was no difference between the spirit and the soul. This word cuts between that, but we cannot hear that word as long as that we are in the condition that, that we find ourselves in. Uh, we, we, 
we are caught in our mindset. And so the question for us, and I think it really is an important question, and I think it's something we can do something about, because he is asking us to bear fruit, is how do we solve this situation? How do we solve this problem? And I think the answer is soil preparation. We're the soil into which the word is coming. And the soil needs to be prayer. If our path is hard and the birds of the air come and swoop down and eat the seed and it can't get in. And one of the reasons it can't get in is because we are so caught in our narratives, in our mindset. We cannot change our minds that, that the word can't get in. That the word can't get in. We need to clear our minds of the thousands of thoughts that we continue to hold on to. The, the word of God cannot get in if, if, if we are on rocky so soil. If, if all uh, of the word comes forth and we, we walk out of here and we, we hear the word and, and it's all exciting and we, we, we go out of the chapel just filled with the love of God and we get in the parking lot and someone cuts us off and it's all over. The cares of the world, the rocky soil, it just, it can't get in. So what do we do to get it in? What, what, what are we asked to do to get it in? How do you get to Carnegie Hall? Practice, practice, practice. How do you hear the word of God? Practice, practice, practice. You know, Buddhism tells us that basically it is a practice. And the practice is basically to clear and to empty the vessel so there's room for it to get in. Now, I am preaching to a really very sophisticated congregation this morning. And even for all of those of you who are at home as well. We know that if we are overfilled, there is no room for anything else. If we're filled with our anxieties, if we're filled with our fears, if we're filled with our thoughts, so we need to empty the vessel. Like the man who went to the guru and he says, give me the secret of life. And he says, of course, I'll give you the secret of life. But first, have a cup of tea. And he begins pouring the tea into the cup, but it's a quarter filled, and it's a half filled, but it's spilling all over everything else. He says... He says, you can't pour any more tea in there. There's no more room. And of course, the master said, yes, and there's no more room in you either until you empty out, until you are willing to sit still. Oh, be still and know that I am God, to sit still and listen. It's the contemplative practice that we, we, we all hear about, and many of us do. But it is imperative that it becomes not something esoteric just for religious and for mystics and for saints. It's, it's for everybody to sit, to empty, to listen. Oh, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Let me be this humble, moist, rich soil in which your word can come and then have an effect in me. And here's the effect we need. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And in the fullness of time, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And every time that Word opened his mouth, lives were created and changed. I am sure that we are to take this word into ourselves and then become the word. I believe that we need to take utterly seriously that we indeed are the body of Christ in space and time. That's not a metaphor. That's a reality. Insofar as we are able to take the word, then when we speak, 
lives will change. And we don't have to say profound things. I am sure there are 99, 100% of everybody in this congregation this morning has said something to someone at some point and said, you remember when you said that? That changed my life. That changed my life. Last week or a couple of weeks ago, we heard a glass of cold water in my name will not go without its reward. Paige reminded me that it could be cold only, only if the well went deep. If the well goes, if, if the word can get in there deep. Now listen, it's all going to happen. The kingdom's going to come. We can't stop it. But we can certainly slow it down. Or, or, we can become agents of the kingdom. And we become agents of the kingdom by practice, practice, practice. Oh, getting out the, the, the deep furrows getting out the, 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 the deep plows, go, softening that soil, humbly abling to receive it, emptying ourselves, because the word is always coming down. Oh, rain down, rain down. Rain down your word on your people. Our holy job is to, to be that holy soil, to produce that marvelous fruit. We are not going to stop the word of God. Oh, but how wonderful, how wonderful if we can, oh, not just enhance it, but can be enablers of that word to usher in the kingdom. And then each and every one of us can do what we are called to do, produce fruit 30, 60, 100 fold.